Mr. Wright here, and welcome to this film which contains lots of GCSE questions involving probability trees. You can download a copy of the questions by hitting the link in the film description. You can do the questions and then watch the film, or you can watch the film and pause it now and again, try the question, and then watch me do the question myself. If you find the film useful, please do hit like, and if you're preparing for your exams, you may want to subscribe to the channel. Right, let's get on with the maths. Okay, question one. We've got two bags of counters, bag A and bag B. Bag A, five red and three blue. Bag B, four red and five blue. Tina takes at random a counter from each bag, completes the probability tree diagram. Right, well, let's first of all have a look at bag A. Bag A, there are eight counters in all, and so the probability of getting a red is five out of eight. The probability of getting a blue is three out of eight. And in bag B, there are nine counters in all. The probability of getting a red will be four out of nine, and the probability of getting a blue will be five out of nine. So that's all the information I need. So now I can fill in the probability tree diagram. So when Tina chooses from bag A, you might get a red. Well, the probability of getting a red would be five eighths. And the probability of getting a blue would be three eighths. Now, let's imagine that she chooses from bag A and she gets a red. Here she is. Now she chooses from bag B. Well, the probability of getting a red from bag B is four out of nine. And the probability of getting a blue is 5 out of 9. Now, let's go back to the beginning. She chooses a blue from bag A. So now she's here. Probability of getting a red is 4 out of 9. And the probability of getting a blue is 5 out of 9. That is the probability tree done. Work out the probability that Tina takes two blue counters. Well, which of these outcomes is two blues? It's down here, isn't it? That one is blue, blue. And to work out the probability of getting here, I multiply my way down the probability tree. So I'm going to do three eighths multiplied by five ninths. Three eighths multiplied by five ninths. Three fives are 15, eight nines are 72. And that is your answer there. Now, if you want to, you can see if you can cancel it down. I'm going to cheat, stick it in my calculator and press equals. And I can see I can cancel that down to 5 over 24, which would be a better answer for that question. And that's number one finished. Question two. Hannah is going to play one game of chess and one game of backgammon. Okay, one game of chess. And the probability she'll win the game of chess is 0.6. So that means the probability that she loses the chess is 0.4. 1 minus 0.6. Now she's also going to play one game of backgammon. The probability she'll win the backgammon is 0.7. She's obviously better at backgammon than at chess. So the probability that she loses the backgammon is going to be 0.3. Okay, complete the probability tree diagram. Right, well, I think we've got all the information we can from the question. So let's complete the probability tree diagram. Right, first of all, she's playing chess. Look, the probability that she wins chess is 0.6, and the probability she doesn't win is 0.4. And then she goes on to play backgammon. Now, if she wins the chess, then she's here, the probability of her winning that game of backgammon is 0.7, and the probability of her losing is 0.3. Let's go back to the beginning. If she started here and she didn't win the chess, then the probability of her winning the backgammon is 0.7, and the probability of her losing the backgammon is 0.3. That's the probability tree completed. Now work out the probability that she wins both games. That is this outcome here, isn't it? Win-win. So we want to see what the probability is of us ending up here. So we're going to start here, and we're going to multiply our way along. So it's going to be 0 0.6, 
multiplied by 0 0.7, which gives me 0 0.42. And that is question two done. Question three. Rachel has two bags. In the first bag, there are four red and six green. And in the second bag, there are three red and five green. Rachel takes at random a ball from the first bag. Then she takes a ball from the second bag. Complete the probability tree diagram. Let's have a think about the first bag. In the first bag, there are 10 balls in all. So the probability of getting a red is 4 out of 10. And the probability of getting a green is 6 out of 10. Now let's have a look at the second bag. Probability of getting a red is 3 out of 8 this time, because there are 8 balls altogether. And the probability of getting a green is 5 out of 8. Now we've got what we need, and we can complete the probability tree diagram. So the first bag, so Rachel starts off here. In the first bag, the probability of her getting a red is 4 out of 10, and the probability of her getting a green is 6 out of 10. Now if she started here, and if she got a red on the first bag, the probability of her getting a red on the second bag is 3 out of 8, and the probability of her getting a green on the second bag is 5 out of 8. And in the same way, if I go back to the beginning, and then I end up here, as I get a green on the first bag, then the probability of getting a red on the second bag is 3 out of 8, and the probability of getting a green on the second bag is 5 out of 8. That's the probability tree diagram complete. Work out the probability she gets takes two green balls. Well, that's going to be ending up here at green, green. And remember, you multiply your way along here. So it's 6 tenths. Multiplied by 5 eighths, which is 30 over 80, which cancels to 3 eighths. And that's question 3 done and dusted. Question 4. Joe is going to play one tennis match and one match of squash. The probability that she'll win the tennis is 4 fifths. Wait a minute. So the probability that she'll lose the tennis is one-fifth. And then the probability that she'll win the squash is seven-tenths. So the probability that she'll lose the squash is not seven-tenths, but three-tenths. Complete the probability tree diagram. Right, well, I think I've got all the information I can out of the question. So here we go. We start here, we play tennis first. The probability that Joe wins the tennis is four-fifths, and the probability she loses is one-fifth. If she wins the tennis, then she's here. The probability that she wins the squash is seven out of ten, and the probability she loses is three-tenths. Now, let's go back to the beginning. Let's imagine that she doesn't win the tennis. Now she's here. The probability that she wins the squash is seven-tenths, and the probability that she loses that game of squash is three-tenths. That's the probability tree diagram complete. Work out the probability that she'll win both matches. Where is that? That's up here. Wins the first and wins the second. So she's going to make her way along here. Remember, you multiply your way along. So it's four-fifths multiplied by seven-tenths. Four-sevens are 28. Five-tenths are 50. You can cancel that to 14 out of 25. And that is number four complete. Question five. Each day Paul wears either a black tie or a red tie to work. On any day, the probability that he wears a black is five ninths. Now wait a moment. If the probability that he wears a black is five ninths, then he must wear a red on all the other days. So the probability that he wears a red, it's going to be four notes. Right, I think that's all the information we can get out of the text there. Let's complete the probability tree diagram. So it's Monday morning. The probability that he wears a black tie on Monday is five ninths, and the probability he wears a red is four ninths. Okay, if he wears a black on Monday, then he's here on Tuesday morning, and the probability that he puts on a black tie on Tuesday it's five ninths, and the probability he puts on a red 
is four ninths. Let's go back to the beginning. He wears it red on Monday. What will he do on Tuesday? Well, the probability of him wearing a black is five ninths. And the probability of him wearing a red is four ninths. That's the probability tree diagram complete. Now let's have a look at the question. Work out the probability that Paul wears different coloured ties on Monday and Tuesday. Well, let's look at each outcome. This is black-black. This one is a black tie followed by a red tie. This one is a red tie followed by a black. And this one is a red and a red. Work out the probability he wears different coloured ties. So that's going to be the probability of getting here or here. Because on both of these outcomes, he's wearing different coloured ties on the Monday and the Tuesday. So let's work out the probability of getting here first. The probability of doing black followed by red. Well, that's this one here. Black followed by red. I'm going to multiply my way along. It gives me 5 ninths times 4 ninths, which, by the way, is 20 over 81. Now, I also need to bear in mind the probability of him wearing a red followed by a black. That's going to be down here and then up there. So that's going to be 4 ninths multiplied by 5 ninths. 4 times 5 is 20. 9 times 9 is 81. Now, eat, both of those outcomes are okay, aren't they? So we really want to know the probability of him getting here or here. So we add those two probabilities. 20 over 81 plus 20 over 81 is 40 over 81 is my probability of him wearing different coloured ties on Monday and on Tuesday. And that's question five. Done. Question six. John plays a game which he can win, draw or lose. The probability of him winning is 0 0.5 and the probability of him drawing is 0 0.3. Just a moment. If the probability of him winning is 0 0.5 and the probability of him drawing is 0 0.3, then he must win all the other games, mustn't he? Sorry, he must lose all the other games. So the probability of him losing is 1, take away 0 0.5, take away 0 0.3. So the probability of him losing is 0 0.2. Okay. John plays two games, complete the probability tree diagram. Right, so here he is starting the first game. He might win it, 0 0.5. He might draw it, 0 0.3. He might lose it, 0 0.2. If he wins the first game, then the second game, here he is, he's about to play the second game. Well, he might win it. He might draw it. He might lose it. Let's go back to the beginning. Here he is. If he draws the first game, then he's starting the second game. Well, he might win it, he might draw it, and he might lose it. And here he is back at the beginning. If he loses the first game and starts to play the second game, well, he might win that. He might lose it. Sorry, he might draw it, and he might lose it. That's the probability tree complete. Work out the probability that he wins both games. So we want a win on the first game. And we want a win on the second game. So that's going to be 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.5. Because you multiply your way along the tree. Which would give me an answer of 0 0.25. And that's question 6 finished. Question 7. Bradley gets the bus on Saturday and Sunday. The probability that his bus will be late on any day is 0 0.2. Well, that means that the probability of the bus being on time or not late must be all the other occasions. So not 0 0.2, but 1 minus 0 0.2, 0 0.8. Okay, complete the probability tree diagram. Let's have a look. So on Saturday, the probability that the bus is late is 0 0.2, and the probability it's not late is 0 0.8. Right, if the bus is late on Saturday, then here we are on Sunday, and again, the probability the bus is late is 0 0.2, the probability it's not late is 0 0.8. And again, 
if the go back to the beginning, if the bus on Saturday is not late, then we're here. Probability of the bus being late is 0.2, and the probability of the bus being not late is 0.8. Great. Okay, work out the probability that Bladley's bus is late on at least one of the days. Hmm, at least one. Now, let's just write down what each of these outcomes would be. This is late, late. This one is late, not late. This one is not late, late. And this one is not late, not late. Okay. Now, we want to know the probability that Bradley's bus is late on at least one of the days. So, in this case, it is late on at least one of the days. Here, it is late on at least one of the days. Here, it is late on at least one of the days. Here, it is not late on any day. All right. Now, we want to know the probability of ending up at those yellow outcomes. So there are two ways we could do this. Method one, we could work out the probability of each of the yellow outcomes of late, 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 not late, and not late, late, each of those yellow outcomes. We could work out those probabilities, and then we could add them together. Remember, when you work them out, you multiply your way along the line. So late, late would be 0 0.2 times 0 0.2. Late, not late, 0 0.2 times 0 0.8. And not late, late would be 0 0.8 times 0 0.2. Work those out and add them up. 0 0.04, 0 0.16, 0 0.16, add them up, gives me an answer of 0 0.36. And that would be perfectly good. Here's method two. You know how you want the probability of all the yellow outcomes. So there's one outcome you don't want this blue outcome here. So you could simply work out the probability of the blue outcome, which by the way is 0 0.8 times 0 0.8, which is 0 0.64, and you could do one minus the outcome you don't want, and that will give you the probability of the remaining outcomes. So you could use method two if you wanted to. Either method is fine, and that is question seven complete. That's the lot for this film. I hope you found it useful. Please tell me so. Please hit like, please leave a comment, and do consider subscribing to the channel.